Good people of YouTube, my name is Spanner and welcome back to the Curse of Naxxramas. We are in the final week of this Hearthstone adventure and we are about to do Frostworm Lair in Heroic Mode. As usual, I've already completed it and recorded my attempts, so we'll be going through those in a minute. But before that, let's just take a quick look at the card so everyone knows the new things that were added this week. So. We have the Echoing Ooze, a 2 mana 1 2, with the battle cry Summon an exact copy of this minion at the end of the turn. You'll probably remember this one from last week's uh, wing, with the boss Gluth, I think. Yeah, he's, he's the one that summoned a ton of these and buffed them, and then you had a very big problem on your hands. Let's see, we also have the Shade of Naxxramas, 3 mana 2 2 with stealth and at the start of your turn gains plus one plus one. So kind of like a mini gruel. And finally we have the main boss himself, Kel'Thuzad. An 8 mana 6 8. At the end of each turn summon all friendly minions that died this turn. And for class cards we have the final one. The Paladin New Secret Avenge. When one of your minions dies, give a random friendly minion, plus 3, plus 2. Okay, so that's it for all of the next Remesis cards. So let's take a look at the bosses in heroic modes. There are only two bosses this week. There are Sephiron and Kalthuzad himself. So for Sephiron, he has Frost Breath, 0 mana, and destroys all enemy minions that aren't frozen. This is a bit more difficult to deal with in heroic modes than in normal, because in normal you get uh, a minion called a frozen adventurer, I think, which is permanently frozen, and the minions that are next to it um, won't be affected by this, by this ability. However, you don't have access to that minion in heroic modes, so you'll have to try something different. As usual, um, hero abilities that cost zero mana are cast at the start of the turn. And then we have Kalthuzad. He has, again, zero mana, Frost Blast. Deal three damage to the enemy hero and freeze it. So maybe heroes with weapons aren't uh, that um, good of a choice. However, Kalthuzad has two phases. When he enters phase 2, his hero ability will change to an 8 mana uh, mind control. Yeah, for 8 mana, he can take control of one of your minions per turn. So, kind of like the old mind control for priest, but in hero power form. In normal modes, it works more like a Shadow Madness. He only gains control of the minion during that turn, and then it returns to you. But in Heroic mode, it's permanent. So you'll have to uh, think carefully about the deck you'll bring. I actually didn't think about that, because I can't see that hero power in this menu, so... I kind of made a mistake, but I managed to beat the boss anyways. I thought it would work the same as the normal, normal mode hero power. But it didn't, and it caught me totally by surprise. Okay, so we know the new cards, we know the new bosses and their abilities, so let's take a look at the decks that I used to defeat them. Alright, so for Sephiron, I used this deck over here, a hunter deck. Um, my initial idea, I kind of wanted minions that would stick to the board, because in at the start of the turn, Sephiron can just kill them all. So I tried going with minions like Nerubian Egg, Harvest Golem, Savannah High Main, things that even if they died, uh, they had a death rattle that allowed another minion to stay in. That didn't quite work, he, he can get rid of the minions pretty easily anyways, so I decided something a bit different, since, well, I, I went with Hunter first because of the hero power, just, just to deal 2 damage every turn, if I could, and... Uh, yeah, so I, I took that deck that I made before with several minions and I, I removed every minion that I didn't need. So this is a very um, light... Um, this is this deck is very light on minions. I have uh, 
plenty of removal though. And I made use most of my um, direct damage abilities to take care of Sephiron and removal to take care of his minions. So, okay, Hunter's Mark to get rid of to, to get rid of minions easily. Flare for card draw, and also because he has Sephiron plays some shades of Naxxramas, so Flare could be useful to get rid of stealth. But it's mostly because of the card draw. Two Timberwolves. Um, these aren't really required, but I wanted them in because, well, I need I needed some beasts to combo with Kill Command, and this one is pretty useful because of um, Unleash the Hounds too, so my Hounds can deal more damage. Then we have six secrets, two explosive traps, two freezing traps, two misdirections. Again. Secrets to get rid of every single minion we can, return minions to his hand and deal more damage to him if, if, if possible. So we also have some mad scientists, just to get access to our traps a little more, more easily. Starving buzzards, just just to combo with um, Unleash the Hounds to get some card draw. And possibly combo with Kill Commands. Eagle Horn Bows to combo with all the secrets that we have and deal direct damage to Sephiron, deadly shots for removal, kill commands for direct damage or removal, unleash the hounds, again, also mostly for removal and card draw with starving buzzard than actual direct damage, multi shot for removal, Leroy just, you don't really need Leroy, I just added him because I can get two extra hounds if I use Leroy first. And also, well, I, I only use him as a finisher though. You can replace him by um, maybe an Argent Commander, or a Reckless Rocketeer, Arcane Golem, something like that. Or, or another card that you think could, um, could work. Then I have two explosive shots. Again, more removal. And a Gladiator, gladiator Longbow. This one is also for removal and direct damage. I prefer this one for removal because uh, we are immune, and the less damage we take, the better. Okay, so this is the deck I used. Again, very light on minions. The only minions that we have are mostly for card draw and to combo with kill commands. So yeah, very big on removal. You'll want to use your hero ability as much as possible to kill him. All right. So this is the deck that I used for Sephiron. Let's take a look at how it went. Rexa versus Sephiron. All right, so here we are against Sephiron. So I just discarded Kill Command and Starving Buzzard. We want some, want some better removal at the early game, and Flare is also useful to get, uh, start getting some card draw. So yeah, we use Flare, get an Explosive Trap, so we have both in our hand, so kind of useful. And you can see there the, his use of the Hero Power at the start of his turn every single time. And it'll destroy all of your minions that are, aren't frozen. Luckily we have almost no minions. So I could have used an Explosive Trap, but it's not very good value. And with any luck I could have gotten a misdirection here, but we got a freezing trap. But at least we take no damage this turn. Okay, and here's the start of the uh, hero power abuse. Again, I could have explosive trap, but that might have been a mistake, because he tends to play minions before attacking. So I could have killed both of them, even that shade. So now I'll only kill the fairy dragon and not the shades, which is which is unfortunate. But it's only three damage so far. Luckily, he plays another fairy dragon to provide me some more value. Still take three damage from the shade though. Luckily the Shades will only be a 4-2 next turn, so it it can still be killed by an Explosive Trap. For 
He also has those guys. Those guys are very, very hard to remove. You can't use Hunter's Mark, you can't use Explosive Shots. You could use a Deadly Shot. But unfortunately I do not have one. You could also add maybe some Owls. Some Iron Beak Owls to the deck. And th then you can action then you can actually silence the Spectral Knights. That way you can use spells on them. So it might be something to consider. Okay, so he has four minions on the board, so you know what time it is. It's time to unleash the hounds. Okay, so to get rid of all of them, we have to use the Timberwolf. And then we get another Timberwolf. So we'll be able to remove quite a lot of minions. It still feels very inefficient though. Because I still need to use two to get rid of the Spectral Knight. But yeah, we drew a ton of cards, which is one of the main reasons we have the Buzzard and Leash the Hounds combo in the deck. And we also removed a ton of minions from the board. And now he's playing an army of Mana Worms and another Spectral Knight, so... Again, hard to remove. So I use the Unleash the Hounds first, so as not to kill too many minions, and therefore reducing the number of Hounds. So here I hit the Spectral Knight with one Hound and kill the Mana Worm. I hit the Spectral Knight with one, because then next turn I could use Gladiator's Bow on it. If I have to. But since he played two other minions, I decided to use an Explosive Shot on the Drake instead. Killing the Shade too. And I play Misdirection, that way we don't take damage this turn. Which is the main reason we added so many traps. Not to take any damage. He also has that card. Pure Cold. Deal 8 damage to the enemy hero and freeze it. So always take that card into account because he can deal 8 damage for 5 mana. Okay, we were pretty lucky there. The Misdirection uh, killed both of the minions. And we now have a massive card advantage. We are in a pretty good position. And he only has a shade of Naxxramas. We don't need to worry about that because it'll hit the freezing trap and return to his hands. And as you can see, I'm saving as many cards as I can to deal with threats. And I keep using my weapons and hero power to deal some steady damage. Okay, so here we had a couple of choices. We had the deadly shot, but since I got a flare, I use it for card draw and then just shoot that thing with an explosive shot. If I can, I would rather save the kill commands to deal direct damage than to use on minions, and the deadly shots I'd rather use for minions like this one, for example, that have more than 5 health, that are out of range of both Gladiator's Longbow and Explosive Shots. Okay, and he is now in lethal range. He plays no cards, so he's pretty much dead now. Now we just hit him with a weapon, Leroy for 11 damage, and play Buzzard and kill commands. Or hero ability and kill commands, that works too. And there you have it, Sephiron in heroic mode has been defeated.
Alright, so it's time for the main event. Let's look at the deck I used for Kalthus ads. Alright, for Kalthus ads, I went with a Paladin deck. And uh, I kind of forgot about the second phase, about its hero power, uh, because it's a bit different from normal modes. In normal mode, he just, for 8 mana, he can um, take control of one of your minions during that turn. But in heroic mode, he takes control of them permanently. Again, for 8 mana. So, yeah, I kind of forgot about that. Luckily, I managed to beat him with this. So, let's go through the cards. I went with the Blessing of Wisdom, just for some extra card draw, if I needed it. Uh, humility, to get rid of his big threats, to neutralize them. Elven Archer, because it combos pretty well with equality. Zombie Chow, I wanted these for the early game, just to deal with his uh, early threats while um, while the 5 health to the enemy hero is not a problem. Equality, for board removal, pretty good. Holy Light, because we'll need healing, we'll need a ton of healing during the first phase, where he constantly deals 3 damage every turn to us. Knife Jugglers to get some early game going on, and uh, Knife Jugglers are pretty good. Their ability is pr pretty decent for this. Wild Pyromancers, be again, they combo pretty well with, with equality to do a massive board clear. Acolyte of Pain for some card draw. Eldor Peacekeepers to neutralize big minions. Earthen Ring Farseers, again, extra healing. True Silver Champions, I added these for the second phase, because we, we can't use them first phase, because we're constantly frozen. But for the second phase, they are pretty useful. Consecration, board removal, combos with the quality, enough said about that. Hammer of Wrath for removal and card draw. Lothab, he has a couple of, sp of spells. Um, he has some blizzards, frostbolt, twisting nether, yeah, he runs twisting nether. So don't overcommit against him, otherwise you'll be you'll be very sad once he uses that. Got some sludge belchers for some taunts, pretty useful. Stampeding Kodo because it combos very nicely with uh, Eldor Peacekeepers and Humilities. Two Guardians of Kings for healing, Lay on Hands for card drawing healing, and Tyrion Fordring because even if he dies the weapon is pretty useful. Uh, but again, you might not want to use this many powerful minions in the late game, because he can take control of them. And yeah, I didn't realize that he would take control of them permanently. But still, this worked for me, so it might work for you. Alright, this is the deck I used for Kalthus ads, so let's take a look at the fight itself. And here we are. The final boss of heroic mode, Kalthuzad. I will fight with honor, and I will fight with huge minions and devastating. So we keep Zombie Chow and Knife Juggler for the early game because they're pretty useful. So obviously we start with Zombie Chow. Take care of his early threats, and there you, there you see the his hero ability, Frost Blast. So will be constantly frozen during this first phase. And the first phase lasts until he's out of armor. You see, he starts with 20 armor, 10 more than in normal modes. And when the armor is gone, um, at the exact moment you, t you get rid of his last, his last point of armor, your turn will end immediately. It doesn't matter if you still can play cards, your turn will end. And it will pass to Kalthuzad's. And phase 2 begins that way. Ok, got a couple of knife jugglers in play. So we can start chipping away at that armor. Unfortunately they don't knife the shade of next rams, but it doesn't concern me that much. Even at 3-3 uh, it can still be killed by a knife juggler. He also plays a um, couple of those, Dark Cultists, so be very careful about the Death Rattle, you don't want to buff a minion 
one of his minions unnecessarily. So here I decide to Peacekeeper the Shades and kill it with the Knife Juggler. That way I don't lose any minions yet. And again, unfortunately, the knives aren't enough to get rid of the Dark Cultist. Okay, so we're, uh, we're very low on health now, so we need to take care of that armor before we take any more damage. So he played a Sludge Belcher. I could have played a minion, but I don't want to risk a knife hitting the Dark Cultist. Otherwise, the Sludge Belcher will be a 3-8. So I just take care of him the good old-fashioned way. There we go. Finally, a knife did its job. He's now at 3 armor. And I'm at 6 health. And he used Blizzard. Which is great, because now I can't attack him and start phase 2 and this turn I'm almost dead so if I can't get him at um, if I can't remove his armor I am dead next turn and the abomination doesn't help too so here I was considering blessing of kings the uh, sludge belcher but I use it on the Acolyte instead, because as I'm going to play it, the Acolyte will live. So we get rid of the Abomination, take 2 damage, and now the Acolyte will deal the extra damage to Kalthuzad, and we'll draw a card. So I remember to use my Hero Ability before attacking, and you see here, here is his new ability. And when phase 2 begins, he summons those two minions over there. Which are 5-5 five, five with taunt. Two of them in heroic mode. In normal mode, they're just 3-3. Uh, three, three. So, I just want to get rid of all of them. So it's equality in consecration time. One of the reasons I picked Paladin for this, so I can get rid of all the minions that appear during phase 2. The battle! We also drew into a Holy Light, which is pretty great, because I, I have one health. And that's not very healthy, not against Kalthuzad. So he has a couple more nasty minions. He has one of those Scalpel Smiths that will destroy your, your weapon when they die, so... 8 damage I'm not looking forward to, so I just get rid of them. I could have used... Guardian of Kings to heal, but I didn't feel very safe at 13 health against 8 damage. Okay, so he played a Frost Elemental, so we gotta take care of that. And now it's Guardian of Kings time to heal. We are now much more comfortable. So now he's using his chains to take control of a random enemy minion. So, this is where I noticed that my Eldor Peacekeeper did not return to me. And I was a bit sad. Sad and confused. Luckily, it's, um, it's a random ability, so he can't target any of your minions. So, you have that in your favor, at least. I don't think I mentioned this during the... Um, while I was explaining the hero abilities of heroic mode, but yeah, it's uh, it's random. It can target a specific minion. So here I just go for full-on healing. And a big threat he has is that Spectral Knight over there. I already used all of my qualities, so I'd rather just get rid of him, because I can't target him with Consecrations. Again, you might want to try some Silences for those guys if you're, if you're having trouble. Maybe some Spell Breakers. So 
So here, I, I believe I was considering uh, getting getting him to overdraw, maybe, but he's, he had a lot more cards in his deck than I did, so I didn't think it was worth it. Using a Pyromancer with a spell to make him draw two cards, and maybe another spell afterwards if I drew into one. Yeah, it's random, so... yeah. You gotta take advantage of, of that by playing a lot of minions. You may also want to try um, getting him with the full boards. A full board of useless minions, like you use Humilities and Eldors and just neutralize all of his minions. That could have worked, maybe, if I didn't place that taunt. Then he'd just have a board full of uselessness. That way he could not steal any of your minions. So we gotta take care of the Guardian of Kings. So we might as well use the Pyromancer and take care of some minions as well. And here I just decide to go for it. So our board is not looking very... not looking very good now. So we only have one choice. To put our faith in the light. And I believe it was at this moment that I realized it was that his power was random. I thought it was just bad bad AI. But no AI could have been this bad. So yeah, he made yeah, he killed my Tyrion, so he made a terrible mistake, because now I have enough damage to kill him with the Ashbringer. Dodging the chains here, so we, I'm almost out of we can actually kill him this turn with Lothab well, and the Ashbringer. Well. And there you go, the final boss of Nextram is in heroic mode, defeated. And here's our rewards. A new card back. The fall of Nextramus. Alright, and with this, the curse of Nextramus is officially over. Thank you very much for staying with me through these five weeks. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all next time.